Hi, welcome to this video. I'm just going to go through each of the questions from your AS Chemistry October test. And I'm going to do one by one. And I'll start, I'll always have in the top left hand corner, the number and the letter of the question. So you can skip through and find which one you maybe want to look at. So it will start with question one, A. And we'll go through that. So you'll always be able to see what question I'm working on by the top left hand corner. So question 1a asks you to explain what is meant by the term isotopes. So you needed to say for this, atoms of an element. So key word there was actually the atoms. And they're all of the same element. And you needed with different number of neutrons. So these are our two key bits to here that they're atoms of an element, so they're different atoms of the same element, but they've got different numbers of neutrons. It would have accepted here with the same number of protons or the same atomic number, uh, but really we're looking for that different number of neutrons. So in part two, that was part one, in part two we had to complete that table where we had 98 molybdenum. So this tells us its mass number and then its molybdenum. So molybdenum, molybdenum is atomic number is 42. So it would have 42 protons. To work out the neutrons we would do 98 minus 42. So 98 minus 42 and you would have got here the number of neutrons 56 and then the electrons because there's no charge, so it's not positive or a minus, the number of electrons must equal the number of protons. So we'd have here 42. Then, if it's got, it's telling you of an ion of molybdenum, so we don't know the mass number yet, but we, and we don't know the charge, but we do know it's got 40 electrons. Now, if it's molybdenum, it must have the atomic number 42. If it doesn't, it's something else. So if it's molybdenum, that must be 42, and it's told us this is 54. So in order to work out the mass number, we're going to do 42 plus 56. These are our protons plus our neutrons to give 96. And now we can see we've got two more protons, then we have electrons. So this will be molybdenum 2 positive. And that's part 1a. So in part 1b, we then have which isotope is used as the standard measurement of relative isotopic mass. We use, it's a carbon atom, but there are three types of carbon, carbon 12, carbon 13, and carbon 14. So we need to specify that it's carbon 12 for 1b. So 1c is our first calculation. So in 1C, in the manufacture of molybdenum metal, an oxide of molybdenum is reacted with hydrogen gas. So we have MOO3 plus 3H2 goes to molybdenum on by its SEN and 3H2O. So there's our equation. It tells us that a chemist reacts 2.878 grams of molybdenum. So we know our mass here. We've got 2.878 uh, grams of molybdenum. Calculate the volume of hydrogen gas. So we're going to need to work out the number of moles of hydrogen because then we can times that by 24,000 to work out the volume of the hydrogen gas. So it is at room temperature and pressure. So regardless of what you want to do, if you had absolutely no clue what to do here, the first thing you should always do in these is work out just what the number of moles of anything that we can work out there. So we can first of all work out the number of moles of molybdenum oxide because N equals the mass over MR. 
and we've been told the mass is 2.878. If we check our periodic table and work out molybdenum, we get 143.9, and those over each other give us 0 0.02. Then, I can put this in. I can then look at the stoichiometry, and I can see that in this equation, for every one mole of molybdenum oxide, there are three moles of hydrogen. So this is a one to three between molybdenum and hydrogen. So I need to do 0 0.02 times three gives me 0 0.06 moles for the hydrogen. Then to work out the volume of gas, I'm gonna have uh, the number of moles 0 0.06 times 24,000 and that gives me 1,440 centimetres cubed. So there are three marks available for this. One mark first of all working out the number of moles of molybdenum oxide. One mark for going one to three and having whatever moles you got here times by three and then one mark for taking this number and times it by 24,000. If it's all correct, you'd have 1,440 centimetres cubed. So one part D, compounds of cobalt, such as hydrated cobalt sulfate, COSO4XH2O, are used in the manufacture of pigments. So we've got Cobalt, SO4, H2O, and we don't know X. If you want to find out the value of X, a student heats 5.62 grams of hydrated cobalt sulfate. So I'm going to say mass here is 5.62 grams. To remove the water of crystallization, the student removes, so at the end, we're going to have copper sulfate, that there, copper sulfate plus x moles of H2O. And the mass here is 2.52 grams. So I'm just setting all this out here. So what I can do before I do anything is go, well I can work out the number of moles of different things. So I can definitely work out the number of moles of water. And if I do it over here, I'll do N of H2O is going to be 2.52 over 18. Mass is 2.52, the MR of water is 18, and that gives me 0.14 moles. Now, the next step is going to what if I had 5.62 grams here and 2.52 grams here, I can work out what the mass of the cobalt sulfate was without watering. And if I do 5.62 minus 2.52, hopefully I get 3.10 grams, and then I can work out the number of moles. So I can do 3.10 over the MR of cobalt sulfate, which is 155, which will give me 0 0.02 moles. And what that tells me is that if I have 0 0.02 moles of the cobalt sulfate, I'll have 0.14 moles produced of H2O. So I can see the ratio. What I want to see is if I have one of these how many moles of this will be produced. So I can see that the ratio of what these are. So I'll take 0.14 and divide it by 0.02 and that will give me seven. So if I had one of these, there'd be seven H2Os. So X equals seven or cobalt sulfate, seven H2O. For every one cobalt sulfate, there'll be seven H2Os. Part E 
was a lot of people found a really tricky question. So E, we've got aluminium forms a sulfide, Al2S3. And now this reacts with water to form aluminium hydroxide. So we're going to react it with water and we're going to form aluminium hydroxide. Now what we have to do here is look and see that aluminium is a group 3 metal. So it is going to form a 3 plus ion. Hydroxide is a single negative anion. So this we will need 3 hydroxides to every 1 aluminium. I'll do this down here. Aluminium is 3 plus. OH is single negative. So we'd have for every three plus, three hydroxides. I know aluminium is three plus because it's in group three. Then it's also going to produce, it gives you the formula H2S. So we have our full equation there, and we just have to now check if it's balanced. So on my left hand side, I have two aluminiums, three sulfurs two hydrogens, one oxygen. On my right hand side I have one aluminium, one sulphur, two hydrogens and three oxygens. So a bit of balancing needed here. I'm going to start, so it goes with my aluminium hydroxide. So if I put a two there, it's going to change my aluminiums to two and gets them balanced. But it's also, I miscounted up here, I had five to begin with hydrogens here. I don't know if you spotted that. And now I'm going to have two times three here, so six plus two there is going to move me to eight hydrogens and six oxygens. The next step, then if I look at my sulfurs, so I'm going to get my sulfurs to balance by putting a three there. That's now going to get my sulfurs to three, but it's going to change my hydrogens again. And I'll have six, 12 hydrogens on this side. And so now I just have to get my hydrogens and oxygens to balance. So I'll put a six there to get that up to 12, and that up to six. And then that's that equation balanced. So quite a lot for one mark going on there. Uh, but still one that was students really struggled on in the test. I think very few actually got this correct. Then F, another calculation. A hydrated salt compound A is analysed and has the following percentage composition. We've got chromium at 19.51%, chlorine at 39.96%, hydrogen at 4.51%, and oxygen at 36.02%. So the first thing we need to do is divide each by their individual atomic masses. So chromium will be divided by 52 to give us 0 0.375. Chlorine by 35.5 to give us 1.126. Hydrogen by 1 to give us 4.51. And oxygen by 16 to give us 2.25. So next... We're going to divide by the smallest, which is 0 0.375. So each individual one will get divided by this smallest number to get us the ratio. And we'll have here 1, then 3, then 12, then 6. So our empirical formula is Cr, Cl3, 6. H2O, or 12 H6Os. If you wanted to, you could write it either way. 
but it does tell you it's a hydrated salt. So we can then put the hydrated water in, but you would have got the marks for having CrCl3 H12O6 instead. So either one of those was fine. And that was question one. You got one mark for this row, one mark for this row, and then one mark for either of these.